This video is sponsored by Skillshare. 2022 is a year of learning and creativity and discovering new passions, and Skillshare is the perfect place to start. It's an online learning community with tons of creative classes available. I've taken some in the past on photography, videography, and watercolor painting, and this time I decided to try acrylic painting. I took the class Sunrays in the Forest Acrylic Painting for Beginners by Debasri Day, and I learned quite a lot, and I took some notes as well. The first thousand of my viewers to sign up using my code COZYKITSUNE, or my link in the description, will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare for all your creative learning endeavors. Have fun! If you are a professional artist, a, an art major, a Claude Monet super fan, this video may not be for you. I'm going to be painting over a Claude Monet print. Um, a little backstory, I got this print from a thrift store for like 10 bucks. It's a fairly large print and a beautiful frame, but it looks nothing like it's supposed to look. By that I mean, this is what it looks like. So here are some before shots of the print before I go in and um, wreak havoc on it. As you can see, it's just very faded and lots of purple hues, um, which looks nothing like the, the original painting does. If you are watching this in hopes of a calming and relaxing painting video, you might want to mute my voiceover because I'm going to be walking you through the absolute shit show that is me attempting to paint. So I started off by laying down a base for the sky. I'm doing this pretty messy. I'm not worrying about it looking too neat because it is just the base. I just slapped some blue down and kind of mapped out where I wanted the clouds to go. And then I'm gonna abandon the sky, come back to it later um, and get to work on the house. I decided to keep the house the same as it was in the original painting and just spruce it up a little bit and change minor details. I decided to make the roof a red roof. I looked at so many Ghibli reference photos of the houses and the exteriors and they almost always had this really cute red roof so I decided to try and mimic it as best as I could just going in and adding some highlights and shadows and details as best I can. Honestly, the house went so smoothly in the beginning that I thought the entire painting was gonna go just as smooth and be pretty easy, but that was not the case at all. I'm adding some stone detail to the chimneys. I don't know why there are so many chimneys on this thing. <laughs> but whatever. <laughs> For the windows, I'm, uh, I laid down a green base and then added some shadows and kind of a gradient effect, and I decided to do some diamond paned windows um, to make it look a little bit more whimsical. So I added that in very lightly, very thin, um, and then I went in and added some lighter shades to some of the diamond panels 
to make the windows look a little bit more reflective. I'm adding some vines and plants creeping up various parts of the house, which is just an essential for um, Ghibli exteriors to really give it that whimsical vibe. In the original painting, he had some sort of plant um, creeping up right here between the windows, and I decided to replace it with a wisteria plant. Then I'm heading back to the skies, and I'm just adding some definition to the clouds with gray paint and blending that out, um, just to touch up the clouds a little bit, and then I'm going to abandon the sky once again and come back to it later to finish it up. Now on to part of the painting that I struggled with the absolute most, and that is the big open space that we have in the painting. Monet filled this space with a giant flower bush, but I did not want to um, just paint a flower bush in this spot. I wanted to add something a little bit different, so I thought originally maybe adding a stone wall would be nice, but really it kind of closed off the painting didn't fit very well. I thought maybe adding an open archway might be a good idea. Um, look, I've got aphantasia. I can't picture in my head what it's going to look like. I just have to go for it and actually put it down and see if I'm going to hate it. Um, and naturally, I hated it. So here I am aggressively mixing green paint to go in and cover up all of my mistakes. I ended up deciding to fill the space with a little hill, a grassy knoll, and a path winding down the middle, um, and a small forest of trees in the background. The problem is that I really had absolutely no idea what I was doing when it came to grass, and the technique that I was using was fine I guess, but absolutely nothing at all like Ghibli grass is supposed to look. Um, so I went in, I added the grass, I added, started adding in flowers, all of which I end up completely erasing and painting over later on, but I'm including it anyway so you guys can see really just how much I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. It's a process, and we're going through this journey together. In this back corner, um, in the shadows, I decided to add one of the adorable little robots from Castle in the Sky, um, just as a little easter egg if you look close enough. So I added him very faintly in the back, covered in plants and moss, and he's just a cutie, really. And back to the skies. This clip, believe it or not, is not sped up at all. <laughs> I'm really just that quick handed. Look how aggressive. <laughs> Sorry, I cannot take this clip seriously. <laughs> uh, anyways, I just really aggressively stippled blue paint onto um onto the sky to give the clouds a wispier appearance. And then in this corner I decided to add a tree and I'm lightening some of the leaves up so I can attempt to make it look like sunlight is shining through. The technique I used for this tree really doesn't look at all Ghibli-esque, um, but you know what, whatever, I, I did my best, so. For the, <clears throat> yeesh, for the uh, sunbeam shining through, I just watered down some really pale yellow paint and that worked out quite nicely. This painting spanned me like a week over a week of just revisions, constantly um, realizing that, again, I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. But at least it's realistic for you guys, for the beginner painters out there that also have no idea what they're doing. So now I'm just going in and adding the stone path, laying down those little stones, adding some shadows, adding some highlights, and darkening some of the edges to make them look a little bit more dimensional. The stone path was really one of the only things that I did not have to go back in and revise because it turned out pretty okay the first try. The same could not be said for this wall. Oh my god, this wall was so frustrating. Um, 
originally was a wood fence, and I decided a stone wall might be nice. Really just a mistake on my part, because I have absolutely no idea how to paint stone walls. Um, no matter how many reference pictures I looked at, for some reason I just could not get the sucker right. But I did my best, and then I moved on to the people. These tiny little people far away in the background. Naturally, I decided I had to make them Howl and Sophie, um, so I just went ahead and started painting them. It was kind of difficult because since they're so small and so far away, uh, you really can't give them too much detail. Monet painted them very messy, and so I just kind of tried to mimic that style. Sophie was relatively easy, Howl less so. Uh, if you're looking at his face right now wondering why he has a weird nose, he doesn't, I swear. I, I fix it later. I fixed it later. Um, and touched up the details and made them look a little bit better. Um, I also made Sophie holding calcifer, which I just think was a cute touch on my part. Next, I decided to add a border. I really like the look of when paintings don't actually reach the edge of the paper and you still have that untouched paper around the edges. So I decided to um, use white paint to try and make it look like the raw canvas. Um, and it worked out pretty well. I think it looked pretty cute. And now on to the nightmare that is the grass. Here we have me going in for what is probably the seventh time trying to really get that Ghibli grass down and um, still really wasn't very successful with that. It's just a technique that my mind is not able to grasp. I'm not sure how they do it. Um, I got, I would say, moderately close in the end, but if anything, it seems like when they lay down the base, they really only use horizontal strokes and then do the details in vertical strokes, but I'm not actually sure, so don't, don't take my word for it. I then went in and added tons of flowers, one because we love flowers, also to cover up the crappy attempt of grass as much as I possibly could. I got frustrated, went for a walk, saw some real flowers, which um, surprisingly the cherry blossoms were in full bloom, rested my mind, took a deep breath, and got back to work on that stinking grass. I was able to notice eventually that Ghibli uses a lot of um, very light yellow greens in the highlights of their greenery, so I decided to try and add more of that, and it definitely helped. I also added a ton more sunbeams, um, just because why not? Next up, I went in and attempted to add the little statue guy from Spirited Away. This was another frustrating process because I could not for the life of me get his creepy little face right. Um, I tried and tried and tried and tried so many times, um, all for naught. I eventually just erased the face completely and focused on adding the moss and the shadows and the highlights and then afterward I went in with a pencil and added a very very faint little face of my own. Um, and he turned out pretty cute, so after that I went in with more flowers, of course. I considered adding no face lounging around in the flower beds, but then I worried that it might be too busy and have too much going on, so I ended up deciding not to. The longer I stared at this painting and worked on this painting with no breaks, the more and more I hated it and everyone gave me really good advice to just cover that sucker up. Cover it up and leave it for a few hours or a few days and don't peek. When you come back, you'll be able to see um, what it is that you don't like about it and what needs to be changed. Um, and that worked out so well, so I highly recommend doing that. I was able to see what needed to be fixed and then went in and added little details. I added some um, various shades of grass blades all over the place. Still not really getting that, that Ghibli grass right, but I, I got close enough, I think. I then decided to add a shooting star in the sky, one of the stars from Howl's Moving Castle. Um, so here's me doing that. 
Another thing I noticed from studying as many reference photos from Ghibli as I possibly could is that they always had um, larger elements or plants or flowers at the forefront to give a lot more depth to the image. So I decided to add some large foxglove flowers to the front to give it that depth that it needed. And I made the foxgloves go out onto the border a little bit as well, just to give it even more definition, even more dimension. I left the foxgloves um, without too much detail because I didn't want them to draw too much attention away from the other elements of the painting. And they turned out pretty cute. I added some shadows where shadows were needed, or at least where I thought they were. I'm honestly really bad at highlighting shading, but um, gave my stone statue a little shadow. And then I added some finishing touches, like some designs on the window shutters. And that was that. That was it. After a long, grueling process, um, I finally had my finished painting. And I think that it came out really cute, especially for the fact that um, I've never really tried anything like this before. I really like it, so I hope that you guys like it too. You can use me as a tutorial for what not to do. I will keep practicing, and someday I will get the hang of the, the Ghibli techniques, but for now, this is as far as my current skill set is going to take me. And shout out to my homeboy Monet for absolutely approving and encouraging this artistic endeavor. Thank you. <laughs>